Hello, everyone, and welcome to Consciousness is Sexy. I'm your host, Patty Alfonso, and today's topic is receiving everything. Everything. <laughs> Those moments when you're aware of something and maybe it's not so comfortable. And I actually had this uh, experience recently that I'm going to use as an example just to show you some of the tools that I used in that particular moment. Um, I've been playing a lot lately with communion and communion, including everything and judging nothing. So communion is about being able to be present with everything at any given moment and not have any kind of judgment about whatever those energies are. And so in playing with being in communion with everything, here, here's my example. We'll, we'll start with that. So I've been seeing this man uh, for a little while and we've gone out several times and he's really 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 kind um, And I haven't actually had that in a long time um, And so we've been getting to know each other and he just has this this space of kindness and caring and generosity of spirit of him that I really enjoy being around and so um, he called me up the other day and he's like, hey, this friend of mine is coming in from out of town. I'd really like you to meet him. He's one of my dearest, oldest friends. And I was like, sure. Yeah, I'd love to. So, you know, we make a date and he takes me to this restaurant that is sort of like his place, you know, that like, do, do you guys have a place where you go to regularly that everybody knows you, you've got your own spot, you know, and, and like, you're just friendly with everyone. Everyone knows who you are. You know who everyone is. And it's just your place. So we hadn't actually been to this place yet. We, we had met in very neutral surroundings. And so I was like, wow, okay. So I'm meeting his oldest year's friend and we're going to like his place. Okay, cool. Not making it very significant, just aware. Um, and we go. And uh, I meet his friend and we're talking and he's like, oh, what do you do? And I make it really simple and I tell people I'm, I'm a life coach and I do my business mostly online, blah, blah, blah. And, and this guy that I was seeing was like, oh yeah, she teaches pole dancing. And, I, and it's true, I do. So we go on with that conversation. And it was really interesting. All of these different energies started to show up. And a lot, there was some stuff that started to show up that was changing the energy that I was aware of in the conversation. Um, so the guy, his friend asks me, you know, well, what, do you, what is that? What do you mean? What do you do? So I explained to him, you know, I work with women and I help them create a greater connection with their body. And sometimes that includes pole dancing. And, you know, the guy that I've that I was dating, I can tell that he's getting all very, you know, this is the girl I'm seeing and she teaches pole dancing and aren't I, you know, <laughs> a man and how lucky did I get? Like there's just this energy bubbling up for him of like, he's just proud, you know, that he's dating this beautiful girl and she also does pole dancing and, you know, and so then, and, but then his friend, um, you know, started picturing me pole dancing. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then his friend is also a photographer. So then he's like, oh, I would love to take pictures of you. And, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sure you would. <laughs> and this whole time, I'm just enjoying all of the energies that are coming up. I'm not in any kind of judgment on, of it, nothing like that. So the conversation continues and there's a few jokes here and there. And as the jokes started to go on, then I started to get a little bit you know, and I, I noticed myself trying to explain exactly what it is that I do. And I got a few sentences out, you know, of what it is to be in communion with your body. And what is that for a woman? What is that for a woman who maybe has shut her body down or shut off her sexual energy? So I start talking about it, but it's not 
it's just not, they're just picturing me pole dancing. And the guy I'm dating is like, oh, I'm going to get a pole in my room. And that creates a whole other energy, you know. And so I noticed this and now it's become a little bit. So, and then I noticed myself like wanting to shut it down. To, I noticed that I could potentially say something in this moment that shuts all of it down. So I get up and I go to the bathroom. And I'm like, okay, everything that this is, whatever this energy is, what is this? And I just start destroying and uncreating whatever that shut down energy is. And I start asking, what is this? What is this? And I... I perceive like somewhere there was this energy of being demeaned, like as a woman, as my work, like the work that I do in the world being demeaned. And I'm like, okay, is that really my point of view? And is that really what's going on here? Because I perceive the guy that I'm dating and he's still very, you know, proud and this is my girl and she's the pole dancer and his friend is still really curious about what that is and what that looks like and there isn't no one here is trying to hurt anyone I wasn't certainly you know like I could have lashed out and and hurt and shut it down and all that but I didn't want that either so no one in this scenario was actually trying maliciously or purposefully to hurt anyone or demean anyone or anything like that. So I'm, so I'm perceiving that energy of demeaning and I'm like, what is that? Okay, wow. So every woman, you know, that has ever felt that a man was demeaning towards her because of her looks or because of what she does and all of that. So, okay, that's not mine because that's not actually what's going on right here. So then the energy of like my mom comes in and the way that she felt towards men and, and, and that like, hatred of, of uh, men who innately, innately and deliciously think about sex all the time. You know, like how did we women get so lucky, <laughs> right? I think the big, you know, problem would be if they didn't picture us sexually. Like, would that be worse, I guess, whatever. Anyway, so I perceive that energy of my mom, those barriers that she had, um, the resentment that she had because my dad was a really sexual man and looked at other women and did all of that. So all of that energy that had come up, okay, that's not me either. That's not mine either. And I, and, you know, I do this in the bathroom, you know, I'm asking these questions. So what is this energy? Is this mine? Can I change it? If so, how do I change it? Um, and I do like, and I know that we've done these on the show, but like the one, two, threes to just kind of dissipate whatever that energy is. So I'm like, okay, everything that is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, and my space gets lighter and I go back out and, you know, we're talking and the energy has shifted and changed. And, and, uh, and then the guy that I'm seeing continues with, you know, pole dancing. And now he wants me to tell everyone in the bar that I'm a pole dancer. He wants everyone. And I'm like, okay, okay. You know, <laughs> okay, we're done with this conversation. Let's move forward. Um, and I was like, okay, back to the bathroom. <laughs> so I go back to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, what is this? What is this? And I do get that my work is important to me. What I create with my clients, what I be, with the energy of pole dancing, which is beyond, you know, um, the sex part or the sexy part. It's really something very different. I also get that not many people get that or can receive that. Um, and so there's all, again, there's all of these different energies all in this pot. And Whatever, whatever energies were coming up for me that were limiting, that were going to, you know, uh, stop any energies that were showing up, I really wanted to change those and let go of them and really just be present with everything without any kind of judgment. 
And so I kept taking myself to the bathroom and using those tools, returning to sender what didn't belong to me. Um, you know, being that space of communion, of being present with every energy without any kind of judgment, being able to receive, you know, the, the, the pictures that they were creating, you know, the fantasies that were coming up in their universe about the idea of me pole dancing, the idea of me pole dancing with other women, the idea of me, you know, all of that, which had nothing to do with <laughs> actually, you know, and then I noticed like that space of wanting to prove, I don't know if prove is the right word, or that space of wanting my work to be acknowledged and to be validated. And in that moment, I was like, you know, do I really require that from these men? No, I know what I'm creating. And as soon as I let go of that, like wanting to be acknowledged, that space dissipated. I also became aware of that energy. And I don't think I'm speaking in a linear fashion, so I apologize. But I also became aware of that energy that all of us women have been taught to fight against. And in that fighting against, we have been taught to make men wrong for that energy. Which again, you know, men think about, women think about sex too, we do, but men just think like a lot of things, that's just where they go back to, that's how they're wired, that's what, and how does it get better than that? You know, but we've been taught to fight against that, like there's something wrong with that. And so I cleared some of that energy too. I was like, okay, that's not me. I have no interest in fighting against that. There was a time in my life when I did, you know, that was part of what, what contributed to me shutting myself down was because I had to fight against anyone thinking of me in that way. Thank goodness that's changed. Because when I lowered my barriers and I received the sort of schoolboyish, giggly, my girl's a pole dancer, I'm going to get a pole, you know, it was actually really sweet and cute. Well, I hope I, that those aren't like demeaning words, but like it was, it was, it was, it was a gift to my body. It was a gift of just like yummy, bubbly energy, sexual energy that was a gift um, that if I had, I, if I had gone into trying to stop the energy, if I had gone into, you know, defending against that energy, if I had gone into trying to prove, then all of that energy would have been shut down and cut off. I wouldn't have been able to become aware of all of these other energies. I wouldn't have been able to be present with all of the energies that were showing up. Um, and so, you know, eventually the conversation shifted and changed and, and we were, you know, his friend left and we continued with our, with our meal. And, and then, uh, at this, at this point, like all of that crunchiness that I was aware of had totally shifted and changed and dissipated um, from my universe, from my body, whatever that was, whatever those points of views were, I returned all of those to sender. They just, my space was like clear and I still, so, so we get in the car and we're leaving and you know, he's all like happy and he had a really good time. And and um, I said, you know, you had a lot of fun telling everyone that I am a pole dancer. And he's like, yeah, I did. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me in that. Thank you for, you know, playing with me in that. And I'm like, yeah, it was, it was super fun. And I said, you know, also, my work is really important to me. And, but I said it from this space of, hey, in addition to that, there's this too. Not 
you know, you made fun of me and you making jokes at my expense. There was like all of that, right? You, how dare you talk about my work that way? Like that could have, but no, it was this space of like, Hey, and you know, and he had a moment and he's like, ah, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. And I was like, I know you didn't, I know. And it's totally okay. And it was actually really fun for me to watch you enjoy that. And my work is also really important to me. And it was really interesting because in that moment, I received a message from a client that I had just had that morning. And she was saying, you know, how grateful she was and that she had been, you know, out and a man smiled at her and she was actually willing to receive that smile and smile back, which wasn't something that she had been able to be. And so, um, and so there was that space where I let go of the need to be validated in which created, you know, that sort of validation or whatever, that acknowledgement to show up. There was that space of me acknowledging what was true for him, right? And again, in perceiving and receiving all of the energy, there wasn't anything malicious about what he was doing. Um, so being present with that energy and acknowledging what was true for me too, from a space of zero judgment and total kindness, from that space, he was able to receive that and acknowledge it as well. He didn't go into, oh, you're too sensitive. That's not how I meant it. You're being a bitch. Like, I've had those kinds of reactions as well. <laughs> um, so the, just there was just this space of gifting and receiving and perceiving and being present with everything and acknowledgement of everything that was present. Nobody was wrong. Nobody was, you know, being overly anything. Um, so it was actually really cool and really beautiful. And I hope that all of that made sense to some, to all of you. <laughs> we have a question here. So Marley says, thank you so much for this. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I am now aware of and notice in my body that most of the time I was in other people's realities and cut me off from me, not in communion with me and everything. And sometimes it is challenging to stay and be in communion. Yes, yes. Um, so what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to be the space of communion with everything with total ease? And anything that doesn't allow that can we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. For those of you watching for the first time, that's the access consciousness clearing statement. It's a magic wand. It just, when you ask a question, an energy comes up and that clearing statement just clears that energy of limitation. When I was in the bathroom, that's what I was using, one of those tools as well. Like, what is this energy? Oh, demeaning. Okay, everything that that is, can I destroy and then create it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pot, all men, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Is this, is this even mine, this energy? No. Years, centuries of women holding on to that story that men demean women. That is not so. It may be for some, but it is not so 100% of the time. And it is certainly not so of every man. And if you are willing to perceive the energy, then you can perceive, right? There was a long time in my life where I was defending against that and I wasn't allowing myself to receive the kindness. There was kindness in what he was do you see how my face lights up when I perceive the energy of his universe and what he was doing? Like, if, if there was any, anything in that, it would just contract and be heavy and be weird. But what is light and expansive is true for you. 
And what is heavy in a contraction is not true for you. So when I'm asking questions and I'm perceiving the energy, I'm perceiving, is this, is this light? Those energies that were coming up created a heaviness that I was aware of in the conversation. I, want, I love how I just framed my own face. I don't know what that was. I don't know that the guys were aware of that. They were just being in their own universe about that. But there was a contraction that was coming up that I was like, okay, there's a heaviness here. Let me go ask some questions about this heaviness. Let me change this energy. Let me um, do whatever is required around this energy. And then come, come back to the lightness of the conversation and the lightness of what was going on. So, um, are there any questions? I'm going to go ahead and bring all of you in. How does it get better than this? We've got a few minutes. Um, if anyone has anything around this, any questions, thank you, Marlee, so much for your um, comment. I wonder what it would be like if we all allowed ourselves to receive everything without judgment if we allowed ourselves to be aware and perceive all energies and asking questions about the energies that are coming up and using whatever tool is available that you know that you have in these 10 seconds to change it, to let go of whatever needs to be let go of. Um, for me personally, and you know, you guys have been, a lot of you have been joining me for a long time and a lot of you have read my books and you know my journey and you know what I've been through and you know how like committed I've been to like the elements of intimacy with myself and the elements of sex with myself and honoring and trusting and, and all of that. Um, and getting to that place of really knowing what is light for me. When we use the tools of access, access consciousness and we peel off the layers of what is not real and true for ourselves and we get to that place of, of what is true, then when those energies pop up that you know this isn't really you, then you dive into the pragmatic use of the tools. Um, so what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to perceive, know, be, and receive what is light and true and expansive for you with total ease? And anything that doesn't allow that, can we destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Um, how does it get better? So what would it be like? Ah, okay, cool. So what would it be like? So I asked the question very quickly in my uh, without words space. What would it be like to receive everything? And anything that comes up where you think, I'm using that word on purpose, where you think you can't receive everything, everything that that is will you destroy and create it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pot, all nine, shorts, boys, beyonds. Because what comes up is then, what if nothing could destroy you? Would an infinite being, if we were being the space of infinite being, would anything be able to destroy us or hurt us or, you know, knock us off of our game or whatever, how, whatever, whatever words you want to use for that? Um, as an infinite being, you have the capacity, the ability to perceive, know, be, and receive everything. And when you are being in that space of infinite being, that expansive space where communion is available and receiving everything is available, then would anything really truly be able to hurt you? So that kind of came up a little bit there. Anyway, how does it get better? I just want to say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Look at all of you joining me on a Sunday morning. How does it get better? Um, 
I, we're coming towards the end here, but I do want to let you guys know that I am leaving for Rome in a few days. And so consciousness is sexy is going to play with being at different times and at different moments. So just, um, uh, be aware and mindful as the emails come out of when the show is going to be because I'm going to be traveling a lot and in class a lot over the next month. So I'm going to play with creating these at different times and, and days and we'll see what that creates. I love that you guys are all here. Thank you so much. How does it get better? Um, <laughs> so the title of the show, Consciousness is Sexy, that moment, that moment, those thousands of moments that I have described in that, in that interaction with the guy that I was dating, um, consciousness is sexy. Had I bought into the lies and the limitations and the um, heavy energies, had I reacted to those heavy energies, had I gone into defense, had I, you know, done all of those things that we're so trained to do here in this reality, I gather I may not have been as sexy as I was in that moment. So consciousness is sexy. What... Mm. <laughs> what consciousness is available now that will unleash the sexy in you? And anything that doesn't allow you to be that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. With that, I leave you. Um, have an amazing day. I adore you. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Kathy. Um, thank you, Marlies, for your questions. Thank you, everyone. I will see you next time. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you around the world. Woo! Bye! <laughs>